Well, I figured that that was the key to understanding him. You had to understand Tolkien as a philologist, and you can see uh, uh, my statement there, uh, really, as a reply to the uh, academic anxiety which other people felt. Well, uh, as it happened, uh, when I said that uh, that, uh, that was the key to understanding him, uh, Tolkien agreed with me. Uh, and here, in fact, is his reply to my paper, which Joy Hill had given him. Well, now, perhaps I'll just read the start of it. Dear Mr. Shippey, forgive me. I must have seemed curmudgeonly never to have at least thanked you for sending a typescript. Uh, I have been under considerable pressure, especially increasing age, which shortens time. I don't like to fob people off with formal thanks when they've taken much care and trouble. But this has too often been the result uh, that they get nothing at all. In fact, I have only just read your paper, author as a philologist. And he goes on to say that um, I find your discussion admirable, one of the nearest to my heart or the nearest of the many that I have received. Uh, well, and then he says in a sort of a way that he still thinks I got some things wrong. Well, just the same, this was uh, a considerable encouragement to me. Um, and it was increased a few years later. What happened this time was that I was awarded a fellowship at St. John's College, Oxford, from the University of Birmingham. And this was a big promotion for me. And when I got there, Norman Davis, Tolkien's successor in his Oxford chair, took me off to meet the old man, as he called him. Uh, and the three of us had dinner together at Merton College. Well, people say that I missed an opportunity there to ask Tolkien all kinds of things. But when I got there, I thought that Tolkien, by then, late in 1972, had been interviewed many times, and he didn't like it much. So I thought we should behave instead like a couple of hobbits. And I just told him the local gossip from Birmingham, what was happening at the school, what was happening at the rugby club, and so on. He was very interested in the rugby club, and asked me who was on the fixture list these days. And then he asked me who was in the team these days. And I realize now that he was wondering, as I ran through the team sheet for him, uh, that he was wondering whether some of the guys I knew were the sons or grandsons of people he knew. He was especially interested in a guy called Peter Neve. And though I didn't realize uh, at the time, I now realize that that was because Tolkien's aunt, who lived in Bag End, was called Jane Neve. And he thought Peter might be a relative, perhaps a cousin of some kind, as perhaps he was. So we had a good evening, and I would have liked to talk to Tolkien again. But of course, this was late 1972, and he only had a few weeks to live. So I didn't get another opportunity. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and please follow our pages on Twitter and Instagram under the name at Uppsala Books.